Hey, this is Hopwood. Thanks for tuning in as I finally made a small dream of mine come true and built a realistic budget PC for 285 bucks with realistic European or North American prices and to make a video review about it, which I've done here by yes. If you enjoy this video, I'd very much appreciate a like or subscription to my channel. Thank you. Now, I purchased all the parts I use for this video on eBay or similar regional used part platforms. Some of the prices are buy it now and some are auction prices. With more patience and time you could probably save another buck or five for each part. The heart and brain of this computer is the Intel Xeon X3430, which over here in Europe or Germany only costs around 15 bucks, including shipping. You can get one from AliExpress for around 7 dollars or bucks if you are patient enough to wait for up to 40 days for it to arrive. I'm afraid I'm not that patient though. The X3430 is a really old 4-core, four 4-threads four Xeon CPU from late 2009, which can actually be overclocked pretty good. Despite its base clock of 2.4 GHz, I was able to push it to 3.5 GHz even with the budget CPU fan, the Alpine 11 Plus, which I purchased new on eBay for only 11.50, including shipping. By the way, I also used my own thermal paste as I didn't really trust the pre-applied thermal pad. Actually, when I closed the PC case, temperatures got too high on full load after I overclocked, so I had to install a case fan as well. More about that in a minute. I combined this almost 10 year old CPU with a MSI GTX 960 Gaming 2G for 105 bucks including shipping, which is the superb card in terms of overclocking and temperature. You can actually pump this card up insanely high without any temperature or stability problems. And holy shit, it's so silent you wonder if the fans are even working. But they are. It's probably the most quiet graphic card I've ever laid hands on, except for fanless entry level cards of course. You could also save a bit of money in choosing a GTX 670 or a 770 instead, which performs similar to the 960, but they also need a little, board, a little bit more power as well. I've decided to go for 8 gigs of RAM as more wouldn't make much sense considering the rest of the system. You just won't notice the difference in 99% of the cases and right now even old DDR3 RAM is kinda expensive. But I was able to get this pair of 2 4 GB Mushkin DDR3 sticks for 28 bucks including shipping. And since this is a budget PC, well you know. And RAM is overrated anyways these days, seriously. As for the main board, I chose a used ASUS uh, P7H55, which I paid 55 bucks for on a local used hardware platform. With a little patience, I could have gotten an even better P55 board, but then again, I'm not very patient with those things. And as I didn't want to spend more on cooling the CPU than the CPU itself, and I didn't plan to overclock it to 4 GHz, the P55 board wasn't really necessary. It also came with a complementary USB 3 PCI Express port. Nice! The computer is powered by a USB Quiet 500 watt system Power 8 PSU, which was, according to the seller, used for a few weeks only and it actually looked brand new. I paid 27 bucks for it, shipping included. I tried to find a used PC case which I found affordable and appealing and kind of failed at it since for under 20 bucks there was only ugly crap on eBay these days. So I've decided to try out this brand new budget case. The TC G15 Revision B ASCA 2 for 20 bucks, of which I made a short unboxing video about by the way if you're interested. It's a very basic case without any fancy stuff, but it's absolutely sufficient for building a budget PC and it even allows for some basic cable management. As a hard drive I was able to snipe a really fast 7200rpm 16MB cache 500GB Western Digital KVR Blue for only 15 bucks, including shipping which achieves around 130MB in writing and reading and that's pretty good I'd say. And last but not least, after overclocking and testing with Prime95, I've decided to spend another 6 bucks on a case fan. The Arctic 12F Silent. Because otherwise the CPU would just get too hot after a while of full load. 
Interestingly, I was able to lower the temperatures much more if I chose to use it to blow cool air into the case instead of pulling out the hot air, which would be the common way of a good airflow, since the front case fan also blows in cool air. The graphics card didn't give a rat's ass whether the fan blew in cool air or pulled out the hot one. It just stays cool as an ice cube anyways. The temperature difference in The Witcher 3 was enormous. It actually dropped from 90 degrees Celsius to 75 degrees Celsius when the CPU was overclocked and from 80 to 62 when at stock clock. That's around 15 to 20 degrees just because of a single 6 box fan. Wow. Despite the cheap Alpine fan, I was able to achieve a stable 3.5 GHz for the Xeon X3530, which is an increase of 45% in speed. With a P55 motherboard and a better cooler, the CPU is supposed to go up to 4 GHz, which is pretty decent for a 9-year-old entry-level Xeon. The MSI GTX 960 Gaming is amazing in terms of overclocking. I was able to raise the core clock by 190 MHz and the memory clock by 450 MHz, which resulted in a around 10-12% performance increase. And it's still silent and insanely cool. It never exceeded 75 degrees Celsius even at full load. The stock clock performance of Cinebench R15 was actually really disappointing with around 265 points, but I was able to push it to almost 420 points after overclocking the X3530 to 3.5 GHz, which is an increase of almost 60%. 3D Mark Firestrike scored a respectable 6,896 points and in Unigine Heaven I saw around uh, 48 FPS and a score of 1,231 with the Extreme preset. And now let's finally have a look at the gaming performance of this machine. Please note that I recorded with Shadowplay so that reduced my FPS by around 5-10% to depending on the game. The Witcher 3 is a visually stunning game with huge demands in CPU power. I saw an absolutely playable average of 55 FPS with a 1% low of 25 um, FPS on high settings in full HD. In high CPU load areas like Novigrad and the other cities you will experience bad frame times resulting in frame drops due to the lack of more CPU power and probably slow DDR3 memory. One way to get around this would be to set the maximum frame rate to 40 or 45, which is possible with the help of a mod as the game itself only allows fixed frame rates of 30 or um, 60 FPS. Practically the same applies to Assassin's Creed Origins, which is also very CPU demanding and even though the average frame rate was a respectable 7, uh, 47 FPS on medium settings, frame times were kinda unstable, especially in bigger cities. I'd still consider it very playable and fiddling around with the settings and fixed frame rates could further smoothen the experience. GTA 5 was another open world title I tested and it ran really good with an average of 89 FPS and a 1% low of 44 FPS. It felt really really fluent even on high settings and the frame times seemed to be pretty stable and frame drops were really seldom. A very very good experience. I even tried 1440p and got a stable 60fps like all the time on high settings except for the textures which I had to cut down to medium um, as the 2GB of the GTX 960 aren't enough to handle that. And well, you've guessed right, I went for 4K in high settings as well and saw a very playable 40fps most of the time which is awesome. At Ghost Recon Wildlands I saw an average of 49 FPS and a 1% low of 29 FPS using the high quality preset. The experience was ok, even though the setting the graphics to medium um, allows for a smooth experience, but it's absolutely playable with high settings. Bioshock Infinite is of course absolutely no problem for this machine as the average frame rate is around 100 on ultra settings in full HD. You could of course play that game in 4K as well. It's absolutely fluent even in the most fury fights and situations. 
I actually saw pretty stable 55 FPS in PUBG on medium settings with a pretty high 1% low of 25 FPS. There actually are a few stutters here and there, but once the game is fully loaded it was pretty fluent. If you want to play PUBG in a competitive way, my recommendation would be to install it on an SSD, as this game clearly profits from short loading times, as slow loading textures can cause a major disadvantage. If you say PUBG, you'll have to say Fortnite as well, which is the much better performing free-to-play alternative, both hated and loved. Nonetheless, I was able to achieve 55 FPS on average on the highest epic preset. The 1% low was very high and there were no feelable frame drops. Absolutely playable in a competitive way, even on the maximum epic preset. The last game I tested was Rocket League, which is another popular esports title and I saw an average of 105 and a very good 1% low of 80 FPS on the absolute highest possible settings. So no problem at all. It's been just so much fun hunting down those parts, ordering them and building a budget PC from scratch, which actually performs really good even though the CPU is so very old and cheap. That's probably the best value for any CPU you can get right now. Of course, the 1156 socket is officially dead and the system is not really future-proof. I think it will be able to play almost all upcoming games at Full HD with medium or higher settings for another while. Especially eSport titles won't be a problem on this machine for years to come. If you liked this video, you know what to do. If you didn't like it, let me know why. Also, don't forget to subscribe. If you've got any questions considering this machine or the used parts, feel free to ask them in the comments. Once more, I'll do my best to answer the, all of them. Also, feel free to ask if you've got any questions with a budget PC gaming system you're building for yourself right now. I'll try to answer those questions as well if I can. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and well, see you next time.